Our top story tonight, kids are getting high off of Fab 50 character statue toy mystery packs. One adult man was arrested for disorderly conduct after huffing the Fab 50 toys. A Nicolo Cicero of Apopka, Florida, who operates a small van-based transportation service. They closed my dress shop? Are you serious? You could, yeah, but you could still get a dress. I will not stand for this! <laughs> I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. Closing the dress shop, how dare he? Where is he? A vanity plate Tom Corliss might have. All right, anyone in the audience? Yeah? It's the yellow one in Savannah Bread Service. No, but that's gonna do. <laughs> Savannah Bread Service? <laughs> I really, like go to Georgia? I really it. probably could stand for that too. Does anyone else know? No. Save the bears. Save uh, bears. I like the bread service one. I know. <laughs> Why don't you just give it to him in the crowd? So that's all the instructions I gave is give a Walt Disney World one day itinerary for someone you dislike or hate. All right. Um, so I try to think of the things that Nick wouldn't like very much for my itinerary. <laughs> um, and I kind of think... This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. And here now are the top Disney Park stories from around the world for October 24th, 2022. To mark National Veterans and Military Families Month, the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds will fly over the Magic Kingdom on Thursday, October 27th. The flyover is expected to take place around 9.30 a.m. when they'll make two passes over the park that culminate uh, when they break off and accelerate, giving the appearance of fireworks. This marks the first appearance by the Air Demonstration Squadron at Walt Disney World since October of 2020 when they flew over Epcot. The Thunderbirds, based out of Nellis Air Force Base, are a group comprised of six F-16 Flying Falcons assigned to the 57th Wing. November marks National Veterans and Military Families Month, celebrating the importance of those who have served and the families that support them. Walt Disney World annual pass holders can purchase a new exclusive popcorn bucket at the theme parks in Disney Springs beginning on October 25th. The yellow popcorn bucket has the classic Walt Disney World wordmark on a golden yellow background, which features a pattern of Mickey Mouse as he appears in Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway inside a D. Meanwhile, Mickey peeks up from, the, uh, from below the annual pass holder. The lid is also yellow. It will be available at the following locations, City Hall Popcorn at the Magic Kingdom, the popcorn cart by the Creation Shop in Epcot, the Feeding Ground Popcorn Cart at Animal Kingdom, which I did not know that was the name of that, and that is amazing, a Hollywood Popcorn at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and the West Side Cart at Disney Springs. Annual pass holders can now book a discounted room at select Walt Disney World Resort hotels for early 2023. Annual pass holders can save between 10 and 25% on rooms for most days, and most nights, from January 2nd, 2023 through April 30th, 2023. From January 2nd through February 28th, discounts are available for most Sunday through Thursday nights, and most nights March 1st through April 30th. A pass holder must present a valid Walt Disney World pass at check-in. The offers are applicable for a uh, minimum number of one night and a maximum of 14 nights. The number of rooms allocated for the offer is limited and advanced reservations, of course, are required. Here's the list of those discounts. You get 25% off at Animal Kingdom Lodge, the villas there as well, Disney's Beach Club Resort, the Boardwalk Inn, the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, Old Key West, Riviera, Saratoga Springs, Wilderness Lodge, and the Yacht Club. 20% off of the cabins at Fort Wilderness, the Animal Kingdom Villas at Jumbo House specifically, Coronado Springs, Port Orleans French Quarter, and Riverside. And then 15% off Boulder Ridge Villas at Wilderness Lodge, the All-Star Movies, Sports Resorts, the Art of Animation Resorts Family Suites, the Boardwalk Villas, Caribbean Beach Resort, Contemporary, and the Polynesian Village. It's also 10% off at All-Star Music, Art of Animation Little Mermaid, Standard Rooms, and Pop Century. 
Following Friday night's performance of Harmonious at Epcot, one of the barges caught fire on World Showcase Lagoon. Twitter user at Tim uh, Beekman reported that the barge caught fire following in Friday's performance. The barge on fire appeared to be one of the fireworks barges docked near the taco-shaped multimedia barges. It never gets old. Uh, Rudy Caseda on Facebook also shared a video of the fire with a more head-on angle. Response teams finally arrived sometime around 9.55 p.m. to attempt to extinguish the fire. It burned brightly but was difficult to see from many angles around the lagoon. One guest who watched the show from beginning to end didn't even notice until after the show, uh, meaning, like, I guess it had sparked during the show, but then really didn't grow to this point till several minutes after the show had ended. Of course, the fire was eventually extinguished, and being a fireworks barge, there's no real damage, right? It's kind of built with the idea that at some point it may catch on fire. Uh, what's funny is this is the second recent uh, situation where this happened. You may remember a couple weeks ago, a part of the America Gardens Theater in the American Adventure caught fire thanks to Harmonious as well. Go ahead and make all your jokes in the comments, kids. Showtimes are now available for Fantasmic as it prepares to return at Disney's Hollywood Studios. On the night of the return, November 3rd, there'll be two performances, one at 8 p.m. and another at 9.30 p.m. The schedule is the same for November 4th through the 7th. November 8th through the 13th, we'll have one show a night at 8 p.m. And from November 14th through the rest of the month, there will be one showing at 9 p.m. each night. But I'm not convinced that's enough to handle the crowds that want to see it. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see them possibly add a second showing to some of those nights. <laughs> This week, do not miss the 2022 edition of the WDW News Tonight Fairly Scary Halloween Party. Featuring rejected Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party offerings. A costume contest for those in studio and at home. A spooky Halloween treat trail through our studio. And the long-awaited debut of the full-length WDWNT The Price is Right. All this and more on the WDW News Tonight Fairly Scary Halloween Party this Thursday, October 27th at 9 p.m. Eastern on WDWNT TV. The Green Army Men Drum Corps will finally return to Toy Story Land in Hollywood Studios in November. Performances will begin on November 6th at 10.30 a.m. They'll also have them at 11.30 uh, a.m., 12.30 p.m., 2.30, 3.30, and 4.30 p.m. Since the parks reopened uh, from the COVID pandemic, that uh, this has not been available. They've only been in the Pixar Pals motorcade, but now the show will be back. A 13-year-old Orlando girl reported being spit on inside the Star Wars Rise of the Resistance queue in the latest dust-up between guests at Walt Disney World. The situation unfolded on July 31st at the Hollywood Studios, according to an Orange County Sheriff's Report released this month. Alana, 13, and her father, Julio, 53, were behind the rest of their party in the ride line. The sheriff's report doesn't say how they got split up or how far back they were, but Alana and Julio were walking past other guests in the queue for the Rise of the Resistance ride in an attempt to meet back up with the rest of their group when they got into a verbal argument with a male. He was named Sebastian. Age 42, he was from Gainesville. He was upset that the two were attempting to cut ahead of him in line when they had been waiting for a long time, the report said. Sebastian then allowed Alana and Julio to pass, but proceeded to spit a mouthful of water onto the side of Alana's face. She then informed her dad she was spit on, and Julio began to verbally argue with Sebastian until they were separated by Disney management. Alana and Julio did not want to press criminal charges for battery, but they wanted to speak with the sheriff's uh, deputy to document the incident. Sebastian admitted to law enforcement that he spit a mouthful of water, which hit the child in the face. Quote, Sebastian said he knew it was a stupid thing to do, but he was upset in the moment and made a bad decision. The spitting incident ended Sebastian's day at Walt Disney World. Sebastian was issued a trespass warning from Disney management and left property in his personal vehicle, said the report. Don't worry, folks, we got more. Here's another one. It seemed like just another Central Florida summer thunderstorm when guests of the Magic Kingdom sought shelter under an overhang at the theme park, a good place to hide from the rain, but tempers soon flared up in the closed quarters. Susan, 68, from Indiana, tried to maneuver her motorized wheelchair into the space, but she lost control and hit a woman, according to the Orange County Sheriff's Report released this month, documenting the August 2nd incident. Susan apologized to the woman and then seemed, uh, it seemed to be the end of the matter. But Donald, age 45 from Claremont, said he was a victim too. Donald confronted Susan and wanted her insurance information, the sheriff's report said, and Susan refused. Uh, 
Quote, Susan told the deputy Donald was being rude to her and her family and she didn't want to talk to him. Susan advised she did not realize she hit Donald and believed she had only accidentally run into the first woman with her wheelchair. Donald was upset Susan apologized to the other woman, but not to him. Quote, Donald told the deputy he thought Susan hit him intentionally. The deputy asked Donald why he thought Susan hit him intentionally, and he told the deputy he, it's because he believes Susan is a racist. The deputy asked Donald why he believed Susan is racist, and Donald said Susan had smirked at him. On the sheriff's report, though, Donald's race is listed as white, and his place of birth is Hawaii. Susan is also listed as white. The deputy refused to share Susan's insurance information, telling Donald that was going to be a matter for civil court. The deputy interviewed the first woman whom Susan had run into. The woman said she didn't see whether or not Susan hit Donald, but believed the whole situation had been an accident. Quote, based upon the verbal statements given to me and the close quarter nature of the crowd of people they were surrounded by, I do not find probable cause to charge Susan with battery, the deputy wrote in the incident report. It should be noted Donald was unhappy with the results of my investigation and only seemed concerned with getting insurance information. What a, it's getting crazy. Holiday sleigh rides are, I don't know how to transition into this one, folks. Holiday sleigh rides are back at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground, and guests can book their Yuletide journey now. The 25-minute long sleigh ride costs $75, and each sleigh can hold up to two, four adults or two adults and three small children. They depart from the Tricircle D Ranch and are available from December 1st through the 23rd and can be booked on the Walt Disney World website or the My Disney Experience app. Guests who book sleigh rides should plan for up to one hour in transportation time as they'll be required to book uh, near the main entrance to the resort and then take a bus to Settlement Bus Depot. Cast members were seen giving chase to a guest running around a parade float at Disneyland Paris in a new video we've seen on Twitter. Twitter user Artie DLP posted video of the incident on Saturday, which shows a young guest running around a float from Mickey's Halloween celebration, which has garnered nearly 400 likes as of the writing of our article. The video was posted with a comment which in English reads, it seems to me uh, that the yellow ears are present on the park. This refers to Disneyland Paris annual pass holders who protested the park reservation system over the weekend who wore yellow Mickey ears or other yellow clothing. The guest in question, of course, isn't wearing those. It's just a joke. But uh, it's, it's a pretty funny clip. That kid is booking it. Back in April, it was announced that Space Mountain at Tokyo Disneyland would be completely demolished and rebuilt with a scheduled opening date of 2027. But even now, two years ahead of its scheduled closure, it seems site work is already beginning on the new Space Mountain. Uh, it looks like it'll be taking over some of the bus lot. Walls are up around a massive chunk of land, much larger than the originally envisioned uh, plot for the project. Three bus stands are behind walls as well, presu uh, presumably will be demolished. What's most shocking is the sheer amount of space set to be used. And while Space Mountain in Japan currently is identical to the pre-2005 Disneyland version with a few minor changes, rumors have swirled in some circles that the Oriental Land Company was very impressed with the technology and concept behind Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind, and Epcot, and that the new Space Mountain may be something similar to that using uh, the Omni-Coaster technology, obviously, which would need a much bigger show building than current Space Mountain's plot would allow. The reserved space is also set at an angle, allowing for a similar tunnel from the new Space Mountain entrance to a gravity building-like structure, again, similar to Cosmic Rewind. It's difficult to see, but the walls are set at an angle which carves out a pocket behind the Tomorrowland Hall structure and next to the Fantasyland Forest Theater, which would block out views of the show building. It's difficult to comprehend what else this land could possibly be for. The gravity building uh, would likely bump up against the Disney Resort Line monorail beam. And Space Mountain, as we know it, at Tokyo Disneyland, again, set to close in 2024, and the new version will open in 2027. The new coaster will be the first thrill attraction at Tokyo Disney Resort since Tower of Terror opened in 2006. Approximately 56 billion yen, or $437 million, will be spent on the project, with the Space Mountain name and theme to be retained, as well as Coca-Cola's sponsorship. For the absolute latest Disney Parks news, head on over to WDWNT.com and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical Disney trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. 
You can also support the entire team behind this show by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to Deep in the Plus. Each week, join host Rob Whiteside as he and a panel of Disney superfans take a different movie or TV show from the Disney Plus catalog. They'll tell you its history, details, and give their review so you'll know if it's worth your time. Current shows, classic movies, and everything in between. Watch Deep in the Plus live Wednesday nights at 9 Eastern for new episodes. Or catch Deep in the Plus anytime on YouTube on WDWNT-TV.